So you're having issues with carpenter bees around the house and they're chewing holes all on your property. There's holes in your fence, holes in your siding, holes in your deck. Um, so you resort to trapping and killing these bees. Well, there's better ways to prevent them from chewing holes in your house. Uh, let me give you some better methods and why you shouldn't be killing these bees as they are incredibly beneficial to our environment. So the reason this bee is choosing to make his house inside of your house is because he's just looking for a place to live, right? See, carpenter bees used to have a lot of space to move around and drill their little holes in the sides of trees and such, but with the modern civilization and all our crazy massive neighborhoods like these, we've cut down all the trees to make room, room for ourselves. So like in this photo, you know, not a whole lot of trees, not much trees here, you know, so these guys are just trying to find somewhere to build their home, just like you and me. And that's why they're choosing your fancy decks and uh, deciding on your house to and your trim to uh, burrow into, because it's the only wood they can find. All the trees are gone. Your house has the only wood available in um, the radius that they're you know, looking around in. So that's why bees are flocking to your house in order to make a home. And that's why there's not just one bee, but there's several bees. See, carpenter bees are actually a solitary bee. Generally, they normally live by themselves and they like to be, you know, away from other bees. But they've had to kind of come together and make several bee holes near each other and learn to live with each other. Because there's not much space for them to have as much area as they used to have. So they, they kind of live in these primitive little social environments um, when normally this is defined as a solitary bee. Because we've taken their houses away, or you know, we've cut down the trees where they normally build their houses, I think it's only fair that we, we build them a new house. Just give them a little something. Um, these are just carpenter bee houses. They can be as simple or as complicated as you want. Uh, this one looks like a pretty nice decoration. It would look really nice in your backyard. Uh, it's kind of a, a conversation piece if someone asks what what that is, you're like, oh, that's a bee house, and they can ask more questions about that. I think it's pretty cool. I actually don't see a whole lot of them around. What I do see is a lot of bee traps like this, which is just, you know, obviously killing a lot of these carpenter bees, um, even though they are really good pollinators. Um, so my best advice is, is step one, phase one, go get yourself one of these carpenter bee houses. They don't have to be complicated. You know, this one's just like a piece of wood with drill holes in it. I mean, this literally someone, there was just some logs laying there and someone, I don't know if these are carpenter bee holes or if someone just took a drill and drilled holes in it. Be, um, but yeah, all you gotta do is take a quarter inch drill bit and start drilling holes in the wood and bees will go near it. And see, the, the carpenter bee lives a really long time. Well, for a bee, he lives a long time. He lives three years. And so every year, the carpenter bee comes back to the same hole he drilled the year before because Carpenter bees don't like drilling new holes. It's uh, it's hard work to make one of those holes. In fact, they can only cut or eat out about one inch of wood a day, and um, it's a lot of work for them. So if you already have these drills pre-existing in your backyard, they will absolutely go for them instead of... Uh, I mean, how do you think these um, carpenter... How do you think these traps work? These traps... Where's one? Um... These traps I just showed you, there's, you know, a hole here and the carpenter bee goes in there looking to make a house and then he goes in this little trap and he dies. Well, that's because there's a pre-existing hole and you don't have to make this hole lead to a trap where he starves to death. You can just make a hole in some wood where he can build a house just away from your house. Just put it in the corner of your yard or um, wherever you can. Um, but yeah, this is phase one. Okay, so you made your little bee house, you put it in the backyard, and the bees are not accepting your welfare housing. Well, let's move on to phase two. Um, I would use a combination of the welfare housing plus painting over you know, the existing areas where the bees are drilling into. Sometimes that's not the case. Maybe you don't wanna actually paint your deck or use some sort of um, stain or, I mean, stains work all right, varnishes are okay, um, but some kind of water sealant Kind of wood stain or a paint would be beneficial and that would deter the bees from chewing holes there and instead go to the bee house that you gave them. Um, sometimes it's not the case and then that's when I would step up to a pesticide 
Lambda cyhalothrin is good. It's found in Demand CS. Um, the label says to treat the wood areas or drilling holes. And uh, I use a light mixture of this, probably like 0.2 to 0.4 fluid ounces per one gallon of mixed solution. I would mix that together, spray it onto the wood areas and the surface area of the wood. It's important we protect the carpenter bee because this is a, you know, a strong bee. It's a pretty resilient bee. Um, other bees like the honey bee, they, they're just smaller and weaker. They're more delicate. They die off a lot easier. And uh, we're having a lot of issues, obviously, if you haven't heard in the news or wherever, that, you know, the honeybees are dying off. And uh, we need these other robust bees to pick up the slack. And that's why it's so important that we save these carpenter bees instead of killing them. I mean, they eat wood for breakfast, for Pete's sake. I mean, this is, this is a strong bee. This is a good bee. I've read in several places people demonizing the carpenter bee, obviously not only because they chew holes and things, but because they're like bad pollinators. They're, uh, they're nectar robbers, is what they say. And that's because sometimes they do get nectar out of flowers without actually pollinating the flower. But that's not like with all flowers. That's only with like the long tubular flowers like penstamens or uh, salvias, um, anything like that. I mean, it's a, the, like I said, the carpenter bee is a big fat bee and he can't fit down all the flowers. So what he does instead is he he bites a hole in the bottom, of, like the base of the flower. He sips the nectar from there, and then he flies away and does it again without actually pollinating the flower. Um, and while some flowers like that, he doesn't pollinate. I mean, he doesn't hurt the flower super bad. He's not killing the plant. Uh, it's just sometimes doesn't pollinate. But he does other things like buzz pollinating, which is a different type of pollination where they beat their wings super fast and it's very beneficial for blueberry bushes, cranberry bushes, um, eggplants, things like that, and other, uh, lots of other fruit, fruits and vegetables and plants in the garden. Most of the time these people calling carpenter bees bad pollinators and they're really not that useful. I found that that's mostly on like blogs of like websites that are trying to sell you a bee trap or trying to sell you some kind of product. Um, for carpenter bees so that they can make a profit off of you and make some money. Um, other websites I've seen, like a lot of college websites with good resources, all of, with no agenda. They all usually say really good things about carpenter bees, never anything bad. I mean, there's a lot of proof that they're great pollinators. They're good for the environment. Um, they're not even, like, the male bees don't even have stingers. It's only the females that have sting stingers. And the females are very docile, usually. You know, you know, you, they're, the females are usually the ones chewing holes in the nest and maintaining things. They're not actually defending the nest. That is the male, but all he really does is just fly around super aggressively. He doesn't have a stinger. He can't hurt you. There's nothing he can do to you, weirdly enough. So they're totally docile. You don't have to worry about them stinging you or your kids or anybody. They're fine to have around. They're, you, can, you can get close to them, watch them, watch them feed on the nectar and everything. And um, yeah, it's a good bee. Any bee is a good bee. You shouldn't be killing any bees. And about your pre-existing bee holes, they can be filled with wood putty, or I've seen people use wooden dowels with uh, wood glued and put it up there and then cut it off. Um, or you can just fill it with caulk. There's a lot of ways you can fill the holes. It's not super long. It's a pretty quick process. If you just watch a couple of YouTube videos from other people, there's a lot of people showing you how to do it. Maybe I'll make a video. Um, but yeah, bee holes, not a super hard thing to fix. Just fix them and then get the bee house and, you know, stain or paint the area where they normally use, use pesticides as a last resort. The, uh, Demand CS, I'll leave a link in the description for that. And hopefully that deters bees from chewing holes in your house. Thanks for watching this video. Please like if, uh, this worked for you or leave a comment about your experience with carpenter bees. Um, and please consider subscribing if this helped you at all. I'll be making more videos like this, and I appreciate uh, seeing your likes and your comments. So, hope to see you in the future. Um, until next time, uh, save the bees.